Chef Drew, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here, man. Thanks for having me. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. No, this is great. I'm looking forward to it. So earlier in the week, I got Chef Drew to share a recipe with me uh, for some chicken fingers. I've got those cooked up here. They're phenomenal. We'll be sharing that recipe. I've got a margarita in hand. All I need now, Drew, is to get to know you a little bit better. So tell me, what got you into the food industry to start with? Well, actually, what really got me into the food industry, I guess, I've always had a passion for food. You know, I played sports in high school. You know, I'm a big comic book nerd. I loved all the stuff like that. But the thing that really drove my passion was just food. I mean, first and foremost, who doesn't love food? Uh, my whole family, we center, like, you know, a lot of our holidays and stuff, huge gatherings, lots of food to be cooked. So, I mean, my uncle was a CIA graduate. Um, my cousin's a CIA graduate, you know, just cooking kind of goes in our family. It's something that we've just always been about. And I just, I was enamored by the culture of, of the culinary world. I mean, I worked in fast food when I was younger. I worked in pizza shops, got a job at a real restaurant. It was just like, everything fell into place. Just everything made sense. And for the first time ever, everything just was making so much sense being in there and just watching people create dishes and then learning from everyone. It was just a very intense environment, but it was just an awesome experience. It definitely takes a certain kind of person to be willing and able to go through everything it takes to get to that kind of level because it is an intense environment in a kitchen. I mean, if you've never been in it, it's hard to describe to people that <laughs> have never been caught in the weeds on a Friday night and, and feel like they're dying. But it, it, if, if you've got a passion for it, man, it's just, it's hard to get rid of it. So how did you get onto the show itself? Did they contact you? Did you reach out to apply to get onto the show? Uh, how, how does one go about getting on Hell's Kitchen? Well, I actually is a part of a chef group on Facebook. Uh, it's called Line Cooks, you know, old, new. It, they're, they're great people. It has like 127,000 members. Um, and I saw a casting call one morning. You know, I, was, I just started a brand new job where I was working now. And I saw it. I'm like, you know what? I'll go for it. Well, what do I have to lose? You know, I always, I always talk about wanting to do something like this. And it's literally right there. So I started replying on this Facebook comment and then I started getting replies back. Next thing I know, I'm talking to this casting agent. We're going through emails and phone calls and then like, hey, you want to set up a Skype interview? Like, okay. And, you know, I'm still going through this whole process and I'm thinking to myself, this isn't real. Like, this is fake. It has to be fake because like, it doesn't happen. Like, you hear it happen, but it's like, it doesn't happen to you. So, you know, I'm going through this whole process and then we do the Skype interview and then I am staring face to face with this casting director from Hell's Kitchen. I'm like, I mean, literally when the screen kicks on, you can see the surprise in my face. I'm like, okay, it's you. Because I looked you up and it's, it's you. <laughs> and, you know, it just, from there, we just did uh, various interviews via uh, Skype. And then, you know, you have to film, they, they want video footage, what you're doing. They want to see what you're about. And you're just trying to really show who you are. And from there, um, you know, you get the fax phone call. Hey, we're, we want to take you to L.A. We want you to go sit in front of a bunch of other people. And they want to meet you. All right. So we went and spent a weekend in L.A. And after that, they just said, you know, if we like you, we'll call you. So obviously they liked you and you got the call. <laughs> Congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, Thank you. But how long ago was that? So from, from start to finish, when you first started talking to the casting director until today, how long ago was that? How long has this process been for you? Going on two years now. Wow. Going on two years. Yeah, it's um, it's been a long time coming. And when I, my, myself, my family, everybody that's involved, been very excited to bring this to the world. So two years in the making, and now you're two nights away from the premiere. What's going through your head at this point, man? What, what's the anticipation like at this point for you? I think, you know, I'm very excited about this, to be honest with you. It's just, it's been a long time coming and it's just your opportunity to share with your friends, your family and everybody across the world, what you're about, you know, it's, it's Hell's Kitchen. You're going to be standing there and you're going to be cooking next to 17 of the best chefs in the world, in the country. And they're vying for the same job that you're vying for, you know? And it's just like, so I just, I'm really excited because I know having been there, what happened and it's just, it's a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. I just, I can't wait for everybody to actually get a chance to see this. That's fantastic. So obviously getting the chance to work with somebody of the caliber of Chef Gordon Ramsay, 
for, for any type of foodie is a, is a dream come true. He is known, uh, although, to have a temper and, and to be creative with insults. Um, but it always seems to me that deep down, he genuinely wants to see people succeed and wants to see people do well. After having worked with him at this point, what, what is your takeaway on Chef Gordon Ramsay? Chef Gordon Ramsay is, uh, first and foremost, a phenomenal human being. I will be the, always the loudest person in the room to say that. Um, you know, he's a fight, he's fiery, he's passionate, but the thing is, that's his name going out there in the plate. So he demands perfection. He, he wants it and he's going to get it. And, you know, he has a bit of an old school way of doing with it, but I mean, it's a kitchen. You're going to grow up here and get some thick skin and you're going to, you're going to get out. You know, that's just what it is. And it's not that it's degrading you or anything like that because they want to see you just be bad. No, he wants you to do well. You know, he wants you to be successful and he's trying to show you that way to become successful. I mean, the man has collectively i mean more i mean more michelin stars than um, most people any any most chefs i should say and his restaurants are widely successful i mean he's operating on two different continents the, the, the man knows what he's doing and i honestly it, that that fiery passion translates to every walk of life with that man and it's it's awesome to be around it's a huge energy and it's a lot i mean it's a little nerve-wracking sometimes but he just really brings out the best in you. It might not seem like that, but I'm <laughs> telling you, he brings out the best in you. That's awesome to hear. Cause I mean, uh, obviously, like I said, if you're a foodie, uh, there are just on the Mount Rushmore of foodies, Gordon Ramsay is certainly up there. Um, so it's nice to hear uh, th that he is as genuine as he seems to be and, and pushes for perfection. Do you feel like you learned while you were there and you're a better, better chef for having spent time with Gordon Ramsay? I can honestly say that not just from Chef Ramsay, but from Chef Christina Wilson, Chef Jay Santos, all the castmates that I was a part of, I walked away learning from each and every individual, not only how to become a better chef, but even become a better person. And there was so much to take away from all this. It was just an extraordinary experience. I mean, you walk in and you know, you're trying to keep your head down, your ears open, your eyes up, and you're just trying to learn from all, everything that you can try and take so much because I mean, th there's a lot of talent standing in that room, not just on the end of, you know, Chef Ramsay and the sous chefs, but you have these contestants. They all went through the same process that I went through. They beat out thousands of people to be here. And most of them standing there run some of the top restaurants in the entire country. And they have their own restaurants. They, they built their own empires. And you just stand there and you're like, okay, let's... You know, here you are, you're just a line cook from, you know, the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. And it's like, you know what, let's do this. Pay attention. And absolutely. I walked away from this with a lot more knowledge about my craft, about who I was as a person and where I want to grow moving forward. I'm so happy for you to be able to get that kind of experience and that kind of knowledge. I mean, there's just very few places on earth where you can condense that kind of experience and knowledge into a time frame that you were able to do it in. And it's phenomenal that you were able to do that. What do you think were some of the most challenging aspects of the competition for you yourself? I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot that goes into it. I and mean, things I obviously can't talk about, but, you know, I think one of the hardest things was being away from my family. Cause this is the first time that I've ever actually been away from my children, my fiance. Um, you know, you're in the entire way across the country. You're in a place that I, I've never been to Vegas. So, you know, you're, I'm there and it's like a whole different world. And, you know, there's just, it, there's, it's, and it's 24 seven. This doesn't stop, you know, you're going and, you know, <laughs> everybody's, you know, watching it all the time. So you, you don't have a moment to yourself. So it's just like, it's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot to take in. I don't think any of us quite comprehend. I mean, not, not just the stress of the kitchen itself, but the filming on top of everything, and like you said, the time away from family, um, going and living with strangers. It's hot. It's like, it's hot, man. It's like literally, yeah. that's the other thing. It's just hot. It's hot everywhere. No matter what you do, it's hot. You just walk outside and you're like, all right, it's hot. I'm going to go inside. Like, it's just as hot. This is <laughs> right. So an aptly named Hell's Kitchen for sure. <laughs> oh my God. I'm, I'm, when I walked through that kitchen the first day, I was just like, I'm going to cook here. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to survive. Like I work in a kitchen. This is disgusting. Wow. Wow! Like this, like this is gross. This is really, this is really, really gross. I'm sitting there, I'm just like looking around, like like things can, like I could leave out butter and it would melt here, in seconds. It's real, it's real hot. 
I imagine a lot of that is because of the studio lights on top of everything that you've normally got in a kitchen. Is is that part of it, I guess? Or is it just Las Vegas is extremely hot? <laughs> it's a lot of things. Vegas is, I mean, itself is hot and there's lights everywhere. But it's, I mean, that kitchen, there's just all the equipment just throws off so much heat. Yeah. There is. There's a, I mean, if you've ever seen the show, like you've seen what goes in that kitchen, you, know, you have French tops, you have brick pizza ovens, and it's just everything's just emitting so much heat. And you're just standing there, like, oh, God, you've all your heavy chef stuff on, you know, there's this, this fire retardant, so it's very heavy. And it's just, it's brutal. It's wow. absolutely brutal. So when you're not cooking for a competition and you're, and you're in a more comfortable setting for cooking, what is it that you enjoy cooking the most as a chef? It's really hard. Uh, question to answer that one because it's just such a broad spectrum of what you know it's really a mood thing for me but I know that my family would tell you that they love my soups the most any type of pasta that I make um from scratch obviously they, they absolutely love that stuff but um me I don't it's really hard to say you know some days hey you know what I think I, I wanted the sandwiches would be something that I'd um, that's what I think would be what I like to do the most. Then it's like, you know what? I also love doing these center plate steaks and seafood and all sorts of other things. So it's, you know, it's difficult, but really there's just, I mean, there is so much, there's just so much in cooking. And that's like, one, that's like one of the hardest questions to ever answer. I'm not going to lie to you. That's it's, it's difficult. Cause I mean, there's every chef says the same, well, I'll pretty much say the same thing. It's, you know, what food do you love to cook? I mean, all of it really deep down. I have a passion for smoking. I love smoked meats. I absolutely love it so much. The farm that I work at right now, Arts Farm, they have a tremendous, the smoker's outstanding. I like, I envy it so bad. It's a huge competition smoker. That thing, there are times in that thing, the amount of weddings we have, that thing's running like a week straight, two weeks straight, no break whatsoever. Thousands of pounds of pork just running through that thing. It's insane. But yeah, barbecue, that's, I guess I could probably be one of the ones I classify as high up on my list. Oh, no, so you're talking to my heart. I spent 20 years in Austin, Texas. I'm in the process of getting move, of moving back to Austin, Texas. And the whole time I was there, we did competition cook-offs. You talk about a great weekend. No sleep whatsoever. Lots and lots of drinking. Um, <laughs> very little eating because by the time you spend that much time over a pit, you're so sick of smelling the food, you don't want to taste it at all. Just give me, just give me another beer. <laughs> right. But one of my favorite things in the world is to sit with a good group of friends, smoke a nice brisket for 12 hours, man the pit, and just because to, to, to me, that's the most involved in cooking that you can be. There is no rushing it, there is no cheating. You've just got to right, take right. the time and the dedication to get it done and to get it done right. And I, I think the purity of that is amazing. Low and slow, baby. That's the way to go. If you're heading on back down to Texas, you got to look my girls up, Mary Lou and uh, Jordan from the show. Uh, Jordan's actually starting her very own catering company. Really? Uh, kicks off this. Oh, yeah. Bullfish Food. She has a smoker that would you do. You, she has a smoker. That thing is huge. She's going to do her own food truck, too. It's it's awesome. And then, you know, Mary Lou is just. I mean, the, the woman is so freaking talented. It, it defies description. She's outstanding. But yeah, if you're ever out there, I highly recommend checking them out. They have their restaurant. Well, Mary Lou's at a restaurant. Jordan will have her food truck. I'm, I've seen the menu. I'm telling you. Where in Texas are they located? Jordan's in Fort Worth. Mary Lou, forgive me if you see this. I don't remember. We talk all the time. <laughs> she's going to shoot me. I don't remember. <laughs> she's somewhere She's somewhere close to Jordan, like three hours away, but it's Texas. So what that doesn't mean. Yeah, that, that, that could be a lot of different places in Texas. Well, look, she'll light you up in the comments and let everybody know where she's located. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, she will. She'll, she'll be here. She's going to have something to say about that. I'm going to shoot myself in the foot after this. That's awesome. We know you've obviously got some skills in the kitchen. You made it to Hell's Kitchen and, and you've been working in the industry for a while. What are some things about Chef Drew that you want us to know that we wouldn't know just because you're a chef. I'm a huge, huge comic book nerd. Like probably one of the biggest. I actually have Green Lantern's uh, lamp, uh, logo tattooed on my leg. Um, it's something that I share with my kids. Um, DC, Marvel, any of it really. I, uh, yeah, what <laughs> thing, though? that's what I'm talking about right there, my friend. That's what I'm talking about big time. I'm into all that kind of stuff. I've, I've always been. It's just... I don't know, something about superheroes and, you know, fighting dragons and all that stuff. It's just been so cool to me. So, you know, I share that with my daughters, too. We've seen every Marvel movie that's come out, every single one of them. We, we, I remember when we went to, we, uh, my fiance and I were just watching Endgame last night, 
And I told her about how the kids and I went and we, like, I remember sitting there crying, like, oh man, I'm, I'm crying in front of my kids. I didn't care. <laughs> like it was just, but um, yeah, I mean, I guess taking a look at it, you wouldn't really guess that, but I uh, mean, video games too. Definitely. I, I, I game a lot with my kids. I've been into this kind of stuff my whole life myself. It's just, and I don't know about you, but I'm 45. And for me, being able to see it all come onto the big screen finally and be able to do, be able to see it the way that it should have been done at this stage in my life is just, uh, it's incredible. It's a, it's a treat I never thought I'd have. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I always, I always, I always wish that my, my, we lost my father like four, five years ago. And I wish that he would have made it to see at least the event. He saw some of the stuff, but you know, to see where it's progressed now, it's just, you know, like you said, you know, growing up, the comic books, the actual watching the anime animated shows, watching everything and you see it translate to the big screen it's like oh man this is like and then not even that but just i'll say this the casting in marvel was just outstanding you know what i mean you couldn't have you you could not have cast anybody in that entire thing the way they did i mean tony stark you know robert downey jr you couldn't have get that got that role any better if you tried you know he no, was it, it, he was stark. born to play that role and he needed his bad boy bad reputation going into it in order to do it right it was, it was absolutely perfect casting and, and it is incredible to see because I mean growing up you know when I was a kid I thought Lou Ferrigno as the Hulk was the pinnacle of everything that would ever be comic book <laughs> yeah I mean and, it's the Hulk and now you yeah, see it Ferrigno. and it's just mind-blowing yeah I like I yeah it's an interesting to do the Hulk I think Mark Ruffalo does, does a decent job but I'm always going to be partial to Edward Norton I always said, I think Edward Norton's Hulk was like one of my favorites. But don't get me wrong, Lou Ferrigno will always be, you know, it's Lou Ferrigno, man. He's always going to be the top dog, but. Yeah, no, Edward Norton did a great job. I don't think he had as strong a script or a storyline to work with as Mark Ruffalo did. But Ed Norton in just about anything he's ever done, I, you'd be hard pressed to say that he did a poor job in anything. <laughs> that's really true. I don't I don't remember thinking to myself, man, that's a terrible Edward Norton movie. <laughs> right, yeah. Just never really <laughs> Things done you that. don't hear often. Right, exactly, exactly. So, Drew, now that we've all become friends and stuff, what's something about Chef Drew that you wouldn't want people to normally know, but you're willing to share with us now that we've gotten comfortable? Comfortable, that's a good way of putting that. <laughs> um, well, you know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it out there. There's something that I won't let you know, and you're gonna have to watch the season to find out because I can't share that with you. Just know that it's it's gonna happen. You're gonna have to watch it because I'm telling you, it's special. <laughs> it's special, it happened. I'm living with it. You guys are going to see it. <laughs> There's no hiding it. So when that, that I'm telling you, you, you have to watch because when you see it, you're just going to be like, you'll see it in my face too. It's even in my face. and just like, oh, it's great. Everybody's going to see this. Everybody. Oh, I can't wait to find out what this is. And so we don't have to wait long. Thursday, January 7th is the premiere night. Um, are you having a watch party with family and friends online or anything special to, to commemorate it? Well, so we're probably going to do the first episode with just my fiance and kids at home. Um, you know, we're still taking precautions. Obviously, the way the world is right now is a little crazy. So we're probably just going to hang out at home, catch the first episode together. We're really excited to watch it. And then the kids are going to get a kick out of it, too. So we're just going to hang out there. Probably do a little uh, things, a few things here and there online. For the first week, and there's nothing really planned. I know that there are some things in the works for ongoing weeks you know um, that we might actually pop into an old restaurant that i used to work in back home in harrisburg and you know do a watch party i'm very much grateful for the time that, that i spent at that restaurant and you know, the owner the managers are all wonderful people and they're all still very close friends of mine so i think we're going to get together just to uh share a few beers some good food and some uh great times of watching the show that's fantastic man that's fantastic so look I know we all have to wait to see how this plays out and everything, but the truth of the matter is win, lose, or draw, the amount of exposure that you're about to get as a chef, it, you, you can't beat it. So what do your parents capitalize on this? Where do you see yourself in the future? How do we track Chef Drew's progress from this point on? Well, you never know. Maybe I'll end up in Lake Tahoe. <laughs> <laughs> but, um yeah there's there's a lot that i actually have going on in the works i'm very involved with the restaurant that i work in now um it's his art for arts farm in lewisburg and you know that's i can't say enough about the people there they're wonderful owners you know, my, my chef that i work under he's, he's fantastic as well um there are some small projects that i have that going forward i'm actually finishing up my cookbook 
it's been 12 years in the making and it is something I'm very proud of. I've put a lot of time, a lot of effort into this, um, a lot of, you know, trial and error through six different restaurants. Um, there's a couple of other small projects that I will be sharing throughout the um, airing of the, se- of the season as well. Jim, keep track of this on Instagram. Probably be the best way. Um, I have my, my Instagram where I really post a lot of what I'm doing and what's going to be happening next. So um, I do, I will say there's some, there's some fun things going to happen. You, I would uh, stay away. want to come along for the ride, come along for the ride. Well, I, I can tell you, I'm very excited to learn more about this cookbook. And as soon as it comes out, I hope you reach back out to me. And uh, maybe we can talk again with the release of that and, and let everybody know when the book is out and what kind of recipes are in it. Because, I mean, you know, as a foodie, man, I'm always looking for something new to try and some, something new to cook. We talked about it. You never get sick of cooking and you never get tired of trying new stuff. So that'll be a whole nother book. Absolutely. Um, I'm really going to say it's. Yeah, I mean, you're actually the chicken fingers right there. That's something that's going to be in there. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of fun stuff there, you know, um, a lot of, you know, a, a lot of cookbooks, they give you the whole, the backstory of this and that. And I know that I want mine to be a little bit different. There's going to be a little small p- piece of me in it, but it's mostly about the food. And what's unique is my take on, you know, it's any real recipes. You start with a base, start with your base and you can build pretty much anything. So from this book, it teaches the ability to make said bases and then translate that into so many different varieties of dishes. You just, you'd be blown away by how much, the, you know, the same things go into certain dishes and it would, it's, it's very unique. Um, you know, there's going to be lots of snippet sandwiches, um, you know, finger foods, n- nice fine dining type, type style, some of the plate stuff, but it's something that you'll want to have in your kitchen. Um, the recipes are tried and true. And I can't give away the theme yet, but the theme I think I'm actually most excited about uh, just because, I mean, the name, it's, it's, it's just fits so perfectly. I think everybody, once they see it, they're like, yeah, I need that in my kitchen. Look at that. Just tease after tease after tease. Teasing the Hell's Kitchen season. Teasing the name of the book. I love it. You're going to have to join me again. Let us know about the cookbook. Good luck this season, Drew. I hope you go far and well into it. And we'll all be watching. Thank you for joining me. Y'all have a good night. Get out there and spread the love for having me i really appreciate it i just wanted to thank chef drew and fox for allowing me to do this and to let you know that i'm looking for wonderfully weird people to interview and throughout 2021 so if you know somebody doing some amazing things that should be highlighted drop me a line shoot me a message let me know who i should be talking to y'all get out there spread the love